And a very interesting topic. And this is one, man, if you've gone through divorce, if you have kids, it is a nightmare sometimes to deal with the courts. That's for sure. And today we bring in Mark Ludwig, friend of the show, executive director of Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. Mark, welcome into the studio for the first time. Um, people may recognize you. Uh, they may not. But you have a bill regarding this. Why do we need a bill right out of the gate mm. for equal shared parenting? Uh, actually, the bill passed this year, yeah. finally in Missouri but why, after yeah. nine years. You, that When I first met you, you were trying to get this passed. Yeah, actually not me. There's a whole team of people. I, I tend to be sort of the media person who gets the attention, but a whole team of people worked on it. But yeah, basically what, what's happened for the last however you know many decades is when parents go through a divorce or separation, a, a child becomes a visitor to one of the parents. And the, the trauma that a kid goes through, yeah. I, I, I just can't yeah. imagine from a child's perspective, yep. they're already confused enough. Mom and dad aren't together and they can't articulate why they're confused. Now, all of a sudden, they only see one parent every other weekend, or mm. in some cases, less. Uh, talk about some trauma. And that's why, if you look at all the statistics of you know high school dropout rates, incarceration rates, uh, behavioral yep. problems, drug use, you know, every time there's a school shooting, every time, I can almost promise you, that kid grew up without a father. Yep. And, and there are some fathers that walk away, but you don't punish the other fathers, or you don't punish the kids of the other fathers because of that. Yeah. So this is this is awesome because you're right. The kid is doesn't need to go through the trauma of a of a dad and a mom breaking up. They need to almost be hidden from that, wouldn't you say? Exactly. And the courts need to do a better job of of kind of facilitating that, I would say. It's like you both want them. We have to figure out how to make this equitable for everybody. Is that kind of what you're saying? Exactly. Everything needs to be seen from the child's perspective right. of what's the healthiest environment for a child. The healthiest environment for a child is to have both their parents. Yeah. You know, opposites attract for a reason. Yeah. You know, my son's mom may not be my favorite person, but you know what? That's my son's favorite person. Yeah. And so he needs her in his life. Each of us add value to his life in a different way. Because so many people ask, you know, wouldn't you like to get full custody? Yeah. I hate no, that. No, I wouldn't that. I wouldn't want full custody. No, I hate that's that. Doing the Did you go through a nightmare situation? Is that what got you involved in this? Yeah. Yeah. I went through a, a situation and, and it got featured by a lot of news channels and, and went around the country on social media. And, what Can uh, you explain what happened to you? Because it had to be something pretty intense for you to devote all the time that you do to this. Yeah. I try out of respect to my son and, and my son's mom. I don't want to get into too many details, but I, I'm the third father that's gone through this in this, uh, in this situation. And uh, my son was taken from me six weeks after he was born. Mm. He was moved without my knowledge. Uh, it took me 204 yep. days to get access to him. Oh. And shortly after that, I was basically relegated to an every other weekend father. And, and I was just shocked because I had a background of working with kids. Yeah. And uh, just absolutely shocked. And so that was when I started realizing, okay, something needs to change here. I Once my story hit some of the media in, in St. Louis, I, I started getting bombarded with emails and text messages from people all around the country saying, hey, same thing happened to me, same thing happened to me. And I realized it's a systemic problem. It wasn't a yeah. one person. I, I, To this day, I get probably eight to 10 messages a day from, from people around the country that say, you're not going to believe my story. And I tell them, hey, not to be rude, but I already know your story because they're all almost yeah. identical. They're, they're created, unfortunately, by the system of the Bar Association. Yep. I've got a, you know, in the greater shared parenting community, there's over a million and about 1.1 million people now. And uh, I tend to be very well recognized throughout that community. So I get a lot of people that email me mm -hmm. saying, you know, I didn't hate my ex near as much until I went into an attorney's office. And that attorney said, look, you're not going to split custody in this state. One of you is going to win and one of you is going to lose. Yes. So unless you want to lose, I need you to dig up dirt on why you're the better parent. And as I said, I don't think there is a better parent. No, I hate that too. Exactly. I hate that too because it's like it, it makes everybody go out of their way to find social media posts or to claim something against the other person. Here's the way I would do it. You go into a big conference room and you go, as the mediator, I'm not even a judge. I'm a mediator. We're going to figure this out. Because you know what? Couples that, that don't even go through a divorce process, they just break up and they have a kid. They sometimes can figure it out better than any court can figure it out, right? I would say Ooh, the parents themselves. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes, but, yes. But no, not all it's the like, time. It's not like, all here, the time. Here's the deal. Man, it's like, my ex it, and I couldn't. It's like, here's the deal. We're coming into this conference room. It's 50-50 right off the bat. Unless somebody is like, we can't do 50-50. 
So it has to start there, correct? And that's that's what our new bill does. The new right? bill doesn't rubber stamp. The new bill says when you walk into the courtroom, yeah. the child is presumed to have equal access yeah. to both parents the same way they had the day before the yeah. divorce is the way things start. And I out. also think that the co- children should not even be near a courtroom. Oh, I can, absolutely. Can you imagine? I, I can people take kids to court? Well, I, some, sometimes yeah. the judge well, yeah. will ask the, the opinion of these kids, it's, correct? Well, yes. if they're over 16, right? No. no. They, no. With the no over, over 12 and 13. Over yeah. 12 yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, like yeah. Back when, Guardian ad litems, Tabitha, are being used in a high frequency. Yes. The, the quote, kids attorney. They don't want kids in court, but sometimes parents... Have yeah, to, they'll, that, they'll force that it. should be a no. Yeah, go. People ask me all the time, you know, do you want your son to, right. to, to, you know, say something? And I'm like, absolutely not. Right. I do not want my son put in the middle of this. This is between his mother and me. This is not his yes. battle. Yes. We, you start off. At, you know what? There should be a boilerplate template. This is how it happens. If you guys get a divorce, there's the template. But you can't do that because every every case is different. It, it might be, but, every th- case but is they different. start there. Well, well, every but, case is unfortunately, different. Unfortunately, right now, there's a rubber stamp of every other weekend. Fortunately, in Missouri, Correct. once the governor signs this on August 28th of this year in Missouri, the new new system will be that a kid is presumed to have equal access to both parents unless proven otherwise. There's as they should be. As, where, as they should be. But, yeah. you know, every case is different. Nothing's cookie cutter. You know, back in my day, it, which was a, a long time ago, <laughs> um, when my son and, and his father, when we split up, I never, I know the courts typically always side with the mother. Well, you know, they almost always do. It's never fair to the father in my opinion. So when we went and we got this all worked out, it was it was a crazy situation, but he ended up getting custody. It was every other weekend. And then on one week, it was two days a week. On one week, it was Wednesdays. The other week, it was Tuesday, Thursday. Is that confusing for kids? I know that kids need equal access to both parents, but is it confusing for kids to go back and forth? I don't I know the answer to that. it's more confusing for a kid to be taken away from one of his parents. Yes. Much more. And I would think so, the, too. There's been 64 peer-reviewed studies that have all said the same thing. I it's agree. It's much more traumatic for a, a child can adapt to go back and forth. They go back and forth to school. Yeah. They go back and forth to baseball school, you know, yes. to, to baseball. They can go back and forth to a house. What they can't stand is having a parent ripped out of their life and not understanding why that happens. By it's one of the other parents. And then we're talking with Mark Ludwood, executive director of Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. Um, you kind of said you, you, you I guess you pointed to it a little bit. Unless there's a risk with a parent, I guess, correct? Yeah, this isn't a rubber stamp. This just says this is the starting point, and that's the beauty of this bill. There are cases where someone's unfit, unwilling, or unable. Sadly, right now, the courtrooms are clogged with every case being thrown in there. Now what we hope is, I don't know what the percentage is going to be, but I I think it's going to be around 80% of the cases Mm -hmm. can be cleared out of the courtroom that don't need to be in there that were riled up wow. cases by an attorney. And now the judges yeah. have the time to devote to the cases that really need yes. the attention. Family court is expensive, isn't it? Oh, it's, oh. It's, <laughs> yeah. It, it drove me into yeah. bankruptcy. Uh, and, 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 yeah, hold on, I, I, I get it. <laughs> and, and, and let's, let's talk about a family. Maybe the, the breadwinner was $55,000 a year and the mom, maybe $0 a year. But the, how does that kind of a family who's going to a divorce, how do they afford the family breakup. You know what I mean? How do they finance that stuff? How do they get into the, it, it, does that make any sense? What I'm trying to say? Yeah, it's like, I don't, I mean, there's so much that comes out of trying to have custody of this kid. How can we reform something like the price of just getting a divorce between the mother and the father? Well, and that's the, the big key right now. As I said, attorneys realize you'll give up on your house or your car, but you'll fight to the death for your child. Mm-hmm. And they know that. So a parent walks into a, an attorney's office and the attorney riles them up because they know they can rack up billable hours. And there's two attorneys, right? Relationship. You can't have the same attorney, well, right? They can rile up yeah. that adversary relationship. Imagine now if you go into that same attorney's office and they say, look, in our state, you're probably going to get 50-50. So why don't you put that money in your own kid's college fund instead of my kid's So college. my question I did a story where a drug dealer got 50-50 custody. I'm not kidding. That's it was a insane. new story. That's insane. It was a situation where a guy had had it in his past and he still got custody that was similar. Yeah, to but he was a 100 percent custody when they were together. An amazing attorney. Also too. true. An is, amazing is, attorney. Is that why people oppose the bill? Because I know there are people who oppose it. The, the two biggest opponents, number one, is attorneys because they know it's the money fund. I mean, it's 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 a cash cow for them. 
Yeah. The second is the radical domestic violence groups. Now, there's a big difference between the true domestic violence groups. I would never want anyone to be abused. The challenge is there's organizations out there that have figured out there's federal grant money. If they can make it appear like there's like every male is a domestic abuser in every single case. Well, how did how were all these people OK to be parents the day before the <laughs> divorce and after the divorce? All of a sudden, we have all these red flag issues going off with false allegations. We call it the silver bullet because it's rampant in family law. Yeah. We actually have district attorneys on camera training attorneys during um, continued education seminars on how to file false allegations and get so the upper hand in court battles. I'm sick to my stomach. I think instead of the defund the police, it should be defund the courts because well, I, I just this is ridiculous. Well, the courts if, are good, too. No, they're not. No. Because here's the deal. It costs money. There, this should be a public expense that we help people. If you're going to get a divorce, we're really here for the kids. We don't care about you guys break up, not knock yourself out, yeah. well, split the house up, whatever you want to do. Too, at the federal level, there's what's known, and now there's not time to get into all the mesh of it, but what's known as title defunding. And there is a lot of money that is paid to the state. And that's to ridiculous. Tort divorce. reform would be a good thing here. What so, do you think? Fortunately, a friend of mine, Andy Biggs, Andy and his wife, Cindy, they went through a situation with their grandson. And I had dinner with them and President Trump, I guess, four years ago and sat next to Andy. And uh, I gave him my business card. And he said, you and I need to talk tomorrow. And so I go into his office mm -hmm. and he brings his wife, Cindy, in there. And uh, they hadn't seen their grandson in, I think, 91 days at that point. Yeah. And so Andy filed the first bill uh, to try and strip some of this Title 40 funding away at the federal level. That's what we really need to have happen. Yeah, it's it's disgusting because it's the kids are the ones we should protect. Right. I don't give a damn about a couple breaking up. That's not it happens every 20 minutes. Um, but the thing is, is I, I think that a judge looking at the situation and saying, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, you, you, the the dad has custody or the mom has custody. I think that those those words should never be uttered. It's like it's fifty fifty. There's there's thirty days in a month. Fifteen go to you. Fifteen go to you guys. Figure it out. Yeah, we're talking with Mark Ludwig, executive director of Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. You said that this is passed in the state of Missouri. That's great news. What about other states around the country? Because we have listeners and viewers all around the country, Mark. Uh, we're starting to make a lot of progress. Arkansas passed a rock solid bill two years ago. Kentucky, West Virginia, Florida passed mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks before us. Texas passed a smaller bill uh, this past week or uh, you know, a week ago. So in red states, we're making great progress because they believe in the family unit. Unfortunately, in blue states, it's going the other direction oh, where they're man. doing red flag laws to just rip families apart. Oh, man. So this has right. become political. Go figure. Of oh, course. yeah, absolutely. It's a it's oh a red God. state bill. <laughs> wow. do, do, are there any are there? And I don't know how any of this works. Are there advocates for children? Are there mediators who come in and say, you know what? We're not for either parent. We don't care what happened in your situation or who you are. We're here to speak for the child and what the child Great wants. question. And next year, there's going to be a bill submitted for guardian ad litem reform. I've got a couple of friends of mine, uh, Jeff and Jeremy, that are, are working on a bill next year to make some serious changes in that aspect mm -hmm. because there should be someone speaking for the children. Unfortunately, yes. uh, yes. non that's unbiased. become monetized too now. Of and course it There has. was a lot in the media about two years ago about guardian ad litems who had all gotten together uh -huh. to rig the system. In Are Saint, you serious? In St. Louis, Louis County, this happened. I did not hear about yes. that. And we then a lot agree. of parents were very pissed. And believe it or not, one of those guardian ad litems, I paid a lot of money two years before it. Well, you know what? If people can find a way to profit off of something, they will, even if it's children, yeah. unfortunately. How did, what if it goes the other way? Are you, what about child support? Is, it, do you, is any of that figured into this, the, the um, monetary amount set? towards who pays for the kid my, or who yeah, pays my to, primary pays focus even though i i literally got driven i'm not exaggerating at one point i was eating food out of trash cans and dumpsters that's mm -hmm. not an exaggeration i did too but i worked at showbiz pizza place but i'm close i'm to that more interested business, yeah. in memories with my son because i can never get those back i can always someday get back on my feet financially i'm not yet but that is one thing that happens though if a if a situation is 50 50 both parents contribute equal unless yes. there's a big disparity in income uh -huh. but barring that each should take care of their own expenses yep. but what happens right now people don't realize the non-custodial parent is not only paying for the bedroom in the other house but you're paying in your house. You can't go to the mortgage company and say, you know what? My son's mm -hmm. only with me for four days a month. Yes. I just pay for this bedroom four days a month. 
So you're Eric, paying there, double that, buddy. Yeah, I the did system it. is I not did it. I, did it. I, did it. I was literally paying child yeah. support to someone living in a four thousand dollar a month home in Ladue on six acres, mm-hmm. while I was living in a sixty eight thousand dollar condo eating food out of trash cans. So what's the movement on all of this right now? Is it going? Or is there a, a move? Are you said in the red states and the blue states, it's not. Is there a movement to? Kind of relook at this whole, you know, uh, child protective, wh- whoever, uh, divorce situation, like from from uh, uh, child payments to who the custody. How is that getting fleshed out right now? And what could we see coming from your bill? That's basically what we're doing. There's about fifteen hundred to two thousand organizations in what we yes. know as the shared parenting community. Mm-hmm. There, there's three big ones. Mm-hmm. And the three big ones. We're all working together to try and create these changes. But it's. It, we're going against, you know, lobbyists. These bar associations are paying millions of dollars a year to lobbyists. And most of us are volunteers. Yeah. We're, you know, I'm an Uber driver. I'm supporting my efforts by driving for Uber, yeah. which isn't even paying my own bills. So right. there's a, it's a grassroots effort that we're all doing and knocking away slowly. Yeah. The two things we need to do is start with a premise of 50, 50 for custody then we need to start attacking this federal funding mechanism at the federal level that's creating that. Are, are men stigmatized by not by going to court and saying, I cannot pay all this? Are they, is there a stigma of men who, who are who, like you just said, have to pay for their own mortgage and the mortgage of the, the ex and all that? that? Is, believe it or not, that's helping us with a lot of the Democrats. Carla May, who was the primary sponsor of the base of this bill mm-hmm. in the in the Missouri Senate, has been a big supporter of ours. And she spoke herself two years ago at the Senate uh, hearing. She made the statement. She so said, in my district, that. she said, black fathers aren't be, aren't walking out. They're being chased out because they know they can't afford an, ah. an attorney and they know that they're going to be stigmatized mm-hmm. as, Debbie. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. A deadbeat yeah. dad. So yeah. they're, they're being chased out mm-hmm. in her district. She said, I, I don't, I, I, my issue with a lot of this, you know, I agree with everything you say. But I think a lot of the problems we have in our inner Vic, cities. Wait a minute, Vic. Did you hear she agreed with everything someone said? <laughs> that was the most positive. Yeah. She you must I listen. Like you must listen anyway, to our show. <laughs> I do. It, you know, it, it just makes me think of those situations where, and I don't know how this works. You know, I've never been married. I've never been through a divorce. I've been through a custody hearing. But when it comes to a situation, let's say you're married. You've been married for 15 years. You know, whatever. And you, you live in a beautiful home in a beautiful neighborhood. And you split up. So now your kids, and let's say you get 50-50 custody. The, the kids are going to be with you 50% of the time, 50% of the, the, with the mom. Usually it's the guy that moves out and the, and the woman stays in the home. And then the, you always hear these arguments. Well, the kids should be able to remain in the family home. Let's not uproot their, them from their home. But yet the woman or, you know, might not be able to afford to pay for the home. Mm -hmm. How does that, how does that work? And how do you guys advocate for that situation? Do you suggest that, that both parents you're moving out and that she should move out too. And you both live in apartments so that you can each share custody of the kids and split expenses. Is that better for the kid to take Mm -hmm. them out of their home or I don't, I, I'm just well, trying to understand you, the logistics of it. I don't think you can it. say one situation's ideal for everything. Right. However, I do notice, as I said, in my own situation where I was dropping a child off to a multimillion dollar Which is home not fair. with BMWs not fair. while he was coming to my house and I literally could not afford to take him out to eat. I couldn't afford, fortunately, his love language is quality time. But, but if it wasn't for Amen. that, that would really be a, a detriment to a child. They have those oh, big dreams. But you know what? What happens if a couple's married and the primary breadwinner earn, loses their job? What happens if they make a career change? Families adjust. Yes, well, you know do. what? If a you divorce or separation happens, the family needs to adjust and they need to work through things for the child and, and to try and figure out what's truly best for the child, not how we can monetize the situation. What age can a child choose right now in the courts from... For example, you don't want these situations, but what if a child says, you know what? I don't want to spend time with my mom. I don't uh, want to spend time with my dad because of whatever the reason was and things happen. How do you? It varies from state to state. In Missouri, it's age 12. And matter of fact, this new bill written in there is um, the, I forget the exact verbiage, but something to the effect of the unimpeded um, view of the child. Because what happens in many cases, you get one parent, not in many, but in a, a percentage, you get a toxic co-parent. And, and intentionally toxic, where they will literally make sure that that child knows you better pick me. And so the child may realize, you know what? I really want this parent who's being abused, but I can't do that because this parent's going to make me pay a price. Horrible. And so they pick the toxic parent 
knowing. And sadly, there have been a lot of suicides that have happened because a child felt guilt because they ended up alienating another parent. And that's why I said, hmm. if it comes to it, I don't want my, my child to have to choose. Mm -hmm. I want him to know I love him unconditionally. I'm going to love him no matter what. If worst case scenario, we'll meet back up at age 18. Yeah. So you I think that, that a parent, even if kids say, I don't want to live with my mom, I don't want to live with my dad, you think the other parent should still for, say, listen, you need to, regardless of your feelings. Is I, my personal belief, I think the child still needs 50-50. Regardless, a child, I don't think is at an age to comprehend they that know. they need both parents. Yeah, six, 12, so to 16, 17. I know it's a tough age. It really is. I know. It's a, it's a, it's just a tough situation because, you know, no situation is equal. They're all situations are so different. It's so hard sometimes for me to wrap my head around this. The courts have been so unfair to fathers. You know, I've read these stories over and over again about fathers committing suicide you know, having drug problems or alcohol problems or, you know, complete breaking down because they were in a situation like yours. Yeah. That matter of fact, what's, what's, and sometimes at no is, fault of their own veteran suicides, but what people don't realize 14 of those 22 suicides a day from veterans are people that were involved in a family, yeah. uh, court battle. Mm. When, domestic, did, when did domestic, this start? Domestic. Is this like a fifties, 1950s thing, sixties, because the family structure was a lot different way back in the day than it is now today it's a lot i mean there's all it? kinds of weird well, variables six, what is it 64 percent of marriages end in divorce something like that right now so we have to think that this these courts are day in and day out dealing with these situations with children and trying to figure out what to do what's best for the parents what's best for the kids it's it's wild yeah yeah. And, and so fortunately in Missouri, we're going to start seeing some changes for the benefit of the kids because there's a lot of kids that have suffered as a result of this. Yeah. And that's a shame. Anything that we haven't covered that you think is important too, because I know we've been firing off some of the questions that you had on the list and some of our um, own things. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Just, we I have do have here. a very active Facebook page for Americans for Equal Shared Parenting because there's a lot of non-custodial parents out there that when it first happens to you, you feel like you're all alone. I can, I can tell you when it happened to me during those 204 days when my son was taken from me, I can remember night after night sitting on my couch crying, just staring at my ceiling, feeling I'm all alone. And, and there's a lot of people that are going through that right now. And, and please reach out, follow a page. You're not alone. I can promise you this is prevalent. And it's very, very serious because as, you know, as our favorite co-host here said, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of suicides that happen and it, there is nothing more dramatic or more traumatic for a child than losing a parent for good mm -hmm. because they couldn't handle the pressure. It's, yeah. it's, it, you know, I'm sure you've seen that. So Do you know some people? Uh, there's eight people that I personally have talked to over the last eight wow. years that I talked to them and found out a week later that they were no longer around. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, it, it has me as a child, my parents split up when I was six. And they ended up living in two different states. I would see my dad uh, one week out of every year and once in a while on holidays. Do you know, I haven't seen him and maybe since I was 16 and I ran into him one day, he didn't even know who I was. I mean, that's why people have to be so careful with your kids to make sure that you keep that bond, that you make sure your kids and their other parent interact. It's so important. I was extremely lucky because I had a wonderful stepfather who has always been a good father to me, but not all kids are that lucky. Oh my God. Joe gave us a, or Ken from the comment line, gave us a stat, 4,000 people a day enter a family court right? in the United States. Can, when you think about almost literally almost oh. every marriage oh. ends in divorce. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot yeah. of, and then a half, lot of issues. Every, half of all kids every, are born out of marriage percent. anyway. So you know, and that this, also, this happens a lot. Um, well, we appreciate you jumping in with us today and educating us in this market. I'm familiar with you. We've done we've done work in the past. Uh, we had you on um, the old show over at the Viper on the Edge. We're grateful for you jumping back in with us today to keep us up now. But now you got a bill that's going to get passed. Yeah, it's it's exciting. It's been I, I've worked on it eight years. There's a couple other people have worked on it nine years. As I said, it's a whole team of people uh, that have worked on this, and it's just been a, a neat thing to to finally. And God bless you for the work that you're doing time. too. Especially, you wouldn't have been doing this had you not gone through the situation. I, I wouldn't have grief, even known that it were, there was a problem. The trauma had you not gone through it, yeah. and of course, you took something from it. So. Um, hey, we're grateful for you jumping in today, my friend. And how can people find you again? Uh, the easiest way is on Facebook. We've got a very active called Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. And then we have a website, afesp.com. 
All right. Well, we thank you for jumping in for cancel this today, my friend. All right. All right. Thanks again, guys. All right. That's thank Mark, you so much, That's man. Mark Ludwood, the executive director of Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. <laughs> 